Hello and welcome to the very first episode of your new favorite podcast, the Golden Nugget Podcast. Woo! Let's go. You guys can feel when I like slow down a word that I'm <laughs> yeah. waiting for, for a response. response. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, 100 percent. I am your best friend and your host, Anna Golden, hence the Golden Nugget podcast. And I am here with my fellow nuggets, <laughs> which is what I would love to call anybody who's a excuse me. Um <laughs> <laughs> longtime fan, longtime listeners. Um uh let's go ahead and start with you. Enoch, what? <laughs> you don't want to introduce yourself? You want me to go ahead and introduce? She's just like slowing down her pace and staring at me. I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on with this you? is my. Okay, I'll do your introduction. Up, who am I? Okay, <laughs> who, am I? who are you to me? You me yeah. Everything for you. So. This is my husband. Wow, that's so crazy to say. We got married like 20 minutes ago. Literally. Um, so trying to figure it this out. This is my <laughs> full time husband, Enoch. Full time indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's been a blast. Full-time husband, part-time business partner now with <laughs> the Golden Egg and Podcast. All the things. Um, what would you say? You you called yourself executive producer. Executive I don't know how producer. Kayla felt about that, but okay now that we're Maybe assigning we titles. titles. <laughs> we can talk about her titles. Oh, we're <laughs> big title guys, huh? Here, oh, we'll so. just see how this episode goes. Anyway, so this yeah. is just the Nugget team, for real. The Nuggies, if you guys... I don't know what you guys would be called. I kind of like Nuggies. I like Nuggies. Nuggies yeah. is cute. Yeah. I would love a chicken nugget. Do not want to say anything about yourself, where you're from, how you got here. How I got here? Yeah. It's just about me now. Let's not well, I mean, I thought I would do a little moment. Are you putting it on your watch, watch right on. now? <laughs> you need that? You started. didn't want to do that prior to the episode? I, I have my watch on. You okay. Time. <laughs> hey, that's good. Awesome. I say, listen, I'm glad to be here. It's an honor. Mm, um, honored. Loving my camera, my little dummy camera. <laughs> God forbid vibe. Enoch has some sort of like uh, like HD camera on him. He's listen, like, oh no, I want to do a photo booth. <laughs> listen, I'm listen, like, yeah, try, you, I have to be to in be freaking humble. 4K. Yeah, 4K. Like literally seeing all of my pores. You look good. You look good. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. All, all right. Say, glad to be here. You look beautiful. Thank you for saying that. Love the socks. <laughs> He's saying that because What's I had a different pair. Apparently, all my socks look like I live outside. She's got holes. So <laughs> it's in her pretty socks. bad. Like me and all my rat socks. Literally, um, as, long as, as long as they don't merge with mine. He not, I know. I Nothing know for makes a me fact. More mad no, than seeing uh, baby, you in my I socks. know for a fact that you take all the best socks in your point in your my drawer. Enoch, <laughs> Enoch, She's Enoch. got socks looking like you've been outside all day. <laughs> I <laughs> use no my shoes. socks. Listen. Anyway, love you. Glad to be here. Yeah, honored. <laughs> all the things. Honored to and have you. The one and only. Okay, <laughs> Car. Car. <laughs> Car. Yeah, Kayla's middle name's Alexis. Kayla, Kayla Alexis, Alexis Rollins. Rollins. Wow, my former Woo-hoo. government name. Stunning. Miss. Love it. <laughs> Miss Kayla Alexis Rollins. Kayla, she's single. Oh. Oh, I yeah. Am. Let the podcast know. So if you're in Dallas, got a full time job. Yeah, driven. Maybe. You don't need a full time job. You're already set up. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you're retired or you're <laughs> living off of your family's money. You, you, you I I take I take any of that. Go <laughs> I don't know about I take generational wealth. <laughs> yeah, you just got a couple of things to go through. You got to go through Jimmy, through Earl, then me. Oh, you you're third. Okay, guys, um, don't be scared off them. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, they're it's sweet, like Jimmy sweet. seems like he'd be scary, but for you, I feel like he's not gonna be as scary. He's not gonna be as scary. scary. He's gonna be like, all right, when are you guys gonna get married? <laughs> and I'm gonna be like, When's we've been on happen? one date. <laughs> I love it. Kayla, anything you want to say about yourself? Besides um, you're single and I, you're looking. I am single and I'm looking. <laughs> um, I'm not ashamed to say it. I, I love mean. that. Put yourself out there, girl. Um, I'm happy to be here. I love Anna so much. Thank you for saying that. love Enoch, my brother now. We okay. love you, <laughs> We're not going to make this about that. And uh, yeah, Titles, we're going to talk about it later. Yeah. So. She is a producer, though. <laughs> it's a producer, yes. producing. A lot of producers here. on here committed. set. Committed. I thought, what could be a more fun group of people to do this with than you two? That's so oh, sweet. That's so kind. sweet. It actually wow. made me cry. When you guys wow. Wow. Let's jump right in. Okay. Well, How are we feeling? Right 
It's the golden um, egg podcast. This is a golden egg podcast, one. and you must be thinking like, "Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Another <laughs> podcast? Another I'm podcast? Like, another podcast to shout in the void of all podcasts? I feel like so many people are starting podcasts, and you know what? It's you like, know what I say to that? Start your own too. Yeah, but this we don't different. have enough voices. This was different. <laughs> What you want me to just like pitch myself? How this is so unique? Yeah. I bet there's a million other people doing a podcast that. just <laughs> like me. <laughs> Listen, but none I'm of like, them are. Nuggies. I'm not here to say that it's going to be different, but I'm going to say it's going to be a little more fun, maybe a little more biblical. I'm just kidding. I'm not coming against All other biblical podcasts, but um, yeah, I think that this is just going to be a fully well-rounded i want you to feel like you're either driving in your car or you're putting on your makeup or you're getting ready whatever it may be whenever you listen to your podcast or you watch maybe on youtube that you're just sitting down with three of your best friends and whatever hosts we may have on and we're just having a real honest conversation and obviously a little bit of background on my life I love Jesus. There's really never going to be a conversation where that doesn't come up because that's really my whole life. Uh, the Lord has changed my life in so many ways um, and has really made everything that has felt black and white completely in color. So yeah. that's going to be pretty much the bloodline of all of our conversations, even if we're talking about fun things like pop culture or why the pandas went back to china crazy Ooh. which honestly is slightly devastating i don't know everything about that but i feel like that's okay. up to my producers to find out the facts i'm I just here you. to talk thanks guys for that um I anyway they're still in that way though there's right? no <laughs> like, i think they're gone they? they're think. gone but all that to say whatever we may be talking about whether it's the deepest things or the most fun pop culture whatever it might be mm -hmm. um everything in this conversation is going to be edifying it should all feed your things. soul um, and it shouldn't feel like I, I feel like there's so many podcasts that I love to listen to because there's so much fun. But then like at the end of them, I'm like, man, I wish that pushed me forward in mm. a way. I wish that like edified my soul in a way. Um, so we kind of want to find the balance of all the things at once. So we love you. We're so happy that you're here. And we're just going to dive right into it. We thought that this episode would just be fun to do like questions about me, kind of get to know the crew a little bit, um, and really the heart behind this podcast, what we were just saying, and why is it called The Golden Nugget? Well, my government name <laughs> is Anna Catherine Golden. Um, people ask me all the time if Golden is a stage name. It is not. That is my um, name from my father. So obviously my name, we had to find a pun on my name because why not? You know, my whole life has just been finding more puns for my last name. So I we mean, went, what a great last name. last name. I mean, like, yeah, not Thank everyone, not that, everyone is so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Thank That's you for saying name. that. <laughs> anyway, all that same, um, the golden nugget also will be a little golden nugget of wisdom at the end of every podcast. We'll kind of make a synopsis of what we feel like the take home is this week, what to meditate on, what to pray about, um, what to really kind of grab onto um, together. And when we have guests, we'll be able to ask them as well what their golden nugget is. What is that one piece of advice that you wish you would have had a little bit earlier that would have made everything a little bit sweeter or something that you feel like you really had to fight for in your life to learn. Um, one of the greatest pieces of advice I ever got was a wise man learns from others' mistakes. A fool learns from his own mistakes. Mm. So I used to be someone who was like, I have to learn for myself. I don't know if I have any others out there like that. But that's not wisdom. Other people can walk through things that we don't have to walk through. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yep. So um, we can learn from that. And so I'm so excited. We have so many amazing people that are going to be coming on this podcast. And if there's anybody in particular that oh. you're like, oh, we would Ooh. love. We got some plans. For them mm -hmm. to come on here. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and uh, shoot shoot your shot. Maybe not your own shot. Okay. <laughs> like they're like, you know who I'd love? Me. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, so All right. Go. I mean, I feel like everybody's a master of something. Everybody can learn anything from somebody. True. Do you guys think that? Truly. I, I think there's something to learn from everyone. I yeah. Everyone's got a Even story if it's not a good thing. Even mm -hmm. if it's like a bad thing. Yeah. Like someone yeah. could be like an expert at being a loser. Yeah. And you're like, I don't want I that. I won't yeah, do that. You can yeah, learn from exactly. that. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Not that any of the nuggets are a loser. Nobody's yeah. a loser. <laughs> you can have a season of loser. <laughs> <laughs> okay Next it's not topic. like nobody's like labeled a loser but you can def i mean i feel like i've walked through like loser seasons in my life am i right 100 yeah. we all I'm like have. smash that like button 
my god <laughs> you if guys you, imagine if you've been a loser before you guys imagine i talk like That's that like during this podcast insult. you guys smash that like button share this oh my okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that's so funny i would never say that if you want to like it you can no pressure don't dislike it, please. I'm too fragile for that. All that to say, that's why you're here. All that to say, that's why we're here. That's why we're starting another podcast. Yeah. yeah. Your favorite podcast. Your favorite podcast. So that what, is a cool What else podcast. can they expect? You got pop culture? Tricks. Treats. Treasures. <laughs> talents. <laughs> and trials. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about them. Drew. That's yeah. good. That's Amen. Just, Five uh, T's. <laughs> Five T's of the Golden Naked Podcast. I uh, am going to say that too many times. But I will never, I don't want to say pod. Like the pod. You know what we should start saying? You know what? It's horrible. I don't know if it's offensive. I dated this guy who would always call his podcast the cast. Have you ever heard anybody That's say that? <laughs> I've never heard of that. But New Ick Unlock. <laughs> Write that down. New Ick Unlock. The calls cast. his podcast cast. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, anyway, I had this guy on the cast. And I was like, the cast? Like Comcast? <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Everyone um, that I've known just was started shaking. It's like, <laughs> there are so many people that I know, like, worldwide, that, like, seeing me with a mic in my hand, they're trembling. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're like, like <laughs> oh, my gosh, she started a podcast. <laughs> they're like, I know like, I'm in there. Reporting it as we speak. Listen, and it's like, that's why you treat everybody with kindness. You never know when they're going to go home, turn the camera on, and flip that mic on. Okay, Yikes. okay. Yikes. <sighs> Praise the Lord. I love it. Okay, so we're going to get into some questions, I think. That, Let's do it. Yeah, just to kind of get the ball rolling. If you're like somehow stumbled upon this and you don't know who I am, like I said, my name's Anna Golden. I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. Crickets. <laughs> Every she, time. She I love how like we both knew not to. Go I was cards. expecting. Uh, yeah, I was expecting go car. You know what? St. Louis has a lot of great sports teams, and as someone they who's do. Albert Pujols was one of your favorite players, that's tough. was my favorite. Was. Yeah. Not anymore. I mean, he was. He was like my hero growing up. I won't lie. Okay. Mm, okay. Well, well you also, just seemed like I'm also you not were repping St. Louis. Let's be <laughs> yeah. <honest. laughs> no thanks. All right. Anyway, I mean, <laughs> neither was Pujols there for a while. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and even for all my bas- basketball, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only sport we didn't have in St. Louis. Tough basketball. Yeah, I mean, I when I grew up in like St. Louis yeah, so sports like f- heyday. What, Fifty minutes from Chicago, you'll be all right. Anyway, fifty minutes. It's like five hours. <laughs> I was about to say. Uh, I don't think the map is mapping. I know. I'm like maybe so. by plane. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> and now next up on transportation. No, I grew up in St. Louis in the prime time of all St. Louis sports. Kurt Warner was on the Rams. Oh, I forgot the Rams used to be in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. I used to make a joke when I moved to Los Angeles that I moved with the Rams. <laughs> like from St. Louis. Anyway, that would <laughs> I go, got that. That would go over <laughs> so well when I was hanging out in L.A. But here, crickets. Guys, can you just leave a courtesy laugh? <laughs> Where's courtesy this going? Laugh? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I'm going to sport. Okay. Well, anyway, okay. you're from St. Louis. From St. Yeah, Louis. Let's, let's, let's born redo. and raised. <laughs> no, I'm not redoing that. I'm proud of where I'm from. Hmm. Anyway, and then I kind of part time grew up in Los Angeles too, being in the entertainment industry, young. So I claim both. I feel like in the Midwest, you really have to have a personality because nobody cares what you look like. So if you're not something to look at, you got to be something to talk to. Wow. So Can't you really boring. that's a statement. That's you real. really oh, go ahead. for sure. I was so ugly growing up. You guys like and up, everybody's please. beautiful. Everybody's beautiful <laughs> in their own way. Everybody's beautiful. But it we was have like phases. You, everybody- I'm going to now have Enoch place in a picture of me and my siblings at a very unfortunate area. Very true. And it just didn't look good for us. And our parents <laughs> stuck in there and believed they, and it panned out. And yeah, better. you guys are all I'm stunning not, now. Thank you for out. saying that. We thugged it out a little bit. That's but you know though. what? I feel yeah, like everybody true. needs to be ugly for a second. I was a little dorky. Hundred percent. Me, middle school. Sure. Yeah, like it builds character. Hundred percent. You teach yourself. We all yourself. look like a little rat for a moment. Yeah, it's just you like need the that. circle of life. It's a little humility, but also a lot of personality is yeah. built. 
Honestly, humor. the best people were once ugly. And, and like, if you pretty, were just pretty your yeah, whole life. Exactly. That's, that's a red tag. <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> honestly, that's flag. just like a terrible setup. Yeah. Um, but if it's that like was a, your story, honestly, God will ask us yeah. what a gift. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I would love that. Anyway, all that to say, uh, <laughs> that's kind of where I was born and raised, repping the loo everywhere I go. The loo. <laughs> we're going to move <laughs> <Okay>. on. <laughs> <laughs> the loo what I've a never hole. heard you talk about St. <laughs> Louis so much That's so tough You guys don't know about it All right, Let's County. talk about LA You <laughs> pop into LA What's that looking like um, I grew up extremely sheltered So never been to school Homeschooled my whole life If you can't tell um, Actually a lot of people say that they can't, you tell can't tell Because they think that homeschoolers are socially awkward But yeah <sighs> And I definitely hung out around a lot of people that were homeschooled. It's so awkward. I think it was just like because you weren't around a lot of people, but we were around a ton of people because we were like yeah. working young and also like church. We're in a lot of groups. So growing up, splitting my time between L.A. and St. Louis, I was like in the entertainment industry young. And then I would go back to St. Louis and I was an intern at a church at our church and they had a house of prayer. So basically just being homeschooled, like if anybody who's listening to this is, was homeschooled when they were younger, like you could honestly get your schoolwork done in like a couple hours if you're pretty diligent. Like I remember there were times in my life that I would like stack up homework and I would like finish an entire semester in like three weeks and just be like, honestly compared to like waking up at 6am and like being there till three. You want to know? It's so funny. I used to cry about that. I used to literally like. I, my only perception of high school or like any sort of school experience was Disney Channel and High School Musical. And I was a hundred percent sure that I would be Gabriella Montez if I went to school. Of course. Of course. And it looked like that. Like, and so I was devastated. I never got to school dance or anything like that, but it was all right. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Looking back, looking back, I feel like I wasted a lot of time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you think that, but it's I like mean, looking. You know, me and Enoch went for only a year apart in school, so like looking back. <laughs> Actually, yeah. too, I went to school early, so oh, I was the in my class. okay, smart. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. really. I meanwhile, was, <laughs> I was playing catch up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like meanwhile, back in St. Louis, I'm doing 17 <laughs> weeks of school in two. And I would <laughs> just be done. And then I honestly, this is going to sound like such a pitch. I honestly would just like read my Bible and make my anointing oils. And I make? collect, yeah, I collected anointing oils and I would make my own. And I remember <laughs> the first purchase I ever made online. First purchase I ever made online was on eBay. eBay and I ordered a bottle of oil from Jerusalem and I was like, oh, my gosh. It's like, honestly, I probably got scammed. Like, I probably probably wasn't from Jerusalem. And it was just, like, olive oil in a bottle with a little bit of, like, fragrance. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is it. Like, this is it. And I pour, I mixed it with another oil because all I would ask for my birthday was anointing oils and this little crystal bottle. And I mixed a few of them together. And I remember I prayed over it. And I named it Purifying Fire. And I put... <laughs> a little label on it and it never stick on there because I got a little oil on the outside of the bottle. <laughs> I mean, so let's, yeah, let's pump the brakes real quick. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get to this point? How old were you? Uh, I was a l- young. I just, our family was so churchy <laughs> and honestly me times 10. Like, I think I was just like born that way. Like I really just yeah. loved the things of the Lord and everything my dad did, I thought was just so incredible because he was literally Jesus to me. Um, and he really showed me the heart of God before yeah. I got to know the Lord for myself. And I remember like the first time speaking in tongues, I was young, young, young. I was driving in the car with my dad and he was explaining it to me. That's and crazy. he was like praying over me wow. that I'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I was like, and that was like every, my family would wake up every day yeah. and we'd all pray in tongues for like 15 minutes at least. Mm. We watch a sermon by T.D. Jakes and then we would all read the Bible together out loud. Fire. That was like my whole. I love that. That was my whole childhood. So Only and then Jakes. my dad. <laughs> honestly. Honestly. Yeah. Well, Joyce Meyer. Time to start. Shout out St. Louis. <laughs> every day life. Also, that was my first acting gig. I did all the Joyce Meyer skits. Yeah, so she like did. wow. On that yep. St. Louis station. 
Yeah. Because, like, they would do a lot of testimonials, and then they would have, like, flashbacks. And I remember I was, oh my goodness, I was probably, flashbacks. like, yeah. I was probably, like, 11, and I had to, like, pretend to, like, smoke a joint. Like Anna? for this girl's testimony, never <laughs> even knew what a joint was. Like I don't even know I drugs. Was about to say like like the most sheltered kid in the whole world. Like my family had this thing on our TV called Sky Angel. Do you guys know what that is? No. no. It was a program <laughs> that you could have on your TV that it would bleep out any sort of profanity, any cuss word, any sort wow. of anything that seemed dishonoring. That's it holy. was so intense that even when it would say <laughs> like, even when we'd be watching like Jesus of Nazareth and they would say Jesus, they would think it was a swear. So it would change it to like juice. Okay. No. And it would fill it in a different word. Oh no, hundred percent. It would fill in different yeah. words. We grew up oh, yeah. so different. This is so no, funny. this was exactly sure. like we weren't listening to secular music. None of that. Like we were very, very streamlined, and we all, we all didn't go to school because we wanted. My parents wanted to know what we were learning in school, and then obviously we went into the entertainment industry, so we couldn't be in school. But it was really having to do with that first. So that was just kind of all played into it, and then me being homeschooled. And convincing, like, my mother is the most persuasive person in the world. And me and my brother, like, convincing all of our friends to, it was like, we went to our church, convinced every one of our friends who was in our age group to be homeschooled. Like, oh my god! And then, then it was like we had this little army of homeschoolers. So then our youth pastor Whoa. saw that like most of the youth group was going homeschooled. So then he was like, "Okay, I'm going to start a group called the Core Group, and we'll all meet out throughout the week because it's like yeah. we all work in our school down at like noon. So then we go up to the church, and that's where we really learned how to move in the prophetic. So we would like spend afternoons at the West County Mall in St. Louis, and we would give prophetic words to people as they walk by us in the mall. How old were you? 11. These 11 are true stories, old, people. Giving out words at the mall. Yeah. And I'm like... It's like uh, an 11-year-old walks up to you <laughs> trying to give you a word. You're like, oh. I'm like... I mean, um, I honestly would love to like see... It's like, do you come in Jesus' name? I Honestly, yeah. <laughs> there was... First, first there were, first. I think we had audacious faith. I mean, as a kid, like you are just like... I would see people come up with like a limp and be like, can I pray for you? The people... The people with their like... That needed healing were a little bit maybe jaded and we're like, all right, kid, get your hands off me. But um, other people were like, yeah, what does the Lord have to say to me? And so that was kind of, mm -hmm. and I was like teaching a Bible study on the book of Revelation young. So it was just, At there 12 was years old. 14. So there's just a lot Jeez. to it. I'm like, I don't even think I opened the book of Revelation yeah, until I, I was know. like an adult. Oh, that's all we learned. I, my parents, we watched the movie Left Behind like all like quarterly left oh behind gosh. is a movie about the rapture if yeah you don't know what that is and i remember watching that as a very young very young age we watched that all the time and then my dad would lead us in the salvation prayer at the end so i will say that my parents are they retract some things that they did with us <laughs> in our youth um I think, you know, they're just trying their best. My dad was a big uh, Perry Stone guy, still is. Love Shout him. Shout out Perry. Shout out to Perry. Yeah. So Signs we had, like, times. travel communion sets. I had a little tabernacle set that I would play with, and that was, like, a dollhouse for me. And then we had, like, the high priests and then all the other priests. That's and still, like, so just crazy to me. The Ark of the Covenant. I know. I'm, like, what I was over it, here with Surfer Barbie. <laughs> I know that's True. honestly it's honestly so crazy to think about I'm like and that was just so natural for me now how'd you go from there to the entertainment industry um, it was pretty much all one uh it all was like simultaneously happening my parents we would spend summers in Kosovo Albania building homes and doing like vacation bible school for kids over there Yes, over every one of my birthdays growing up. So I spent all my birthdays in Albania. Um, and there were never any other kids on the trip. I'm like six years old going into like, I think they were still in war with the Serbian people at this time. Um, and it, so it was, it was kind of like a, a bit of a dangerous thing. And I was like six years old. Everybody else on the trip was like 40. So, <clears throat> but my brother was with me. He was like two years older than me. So... We would go on these trips every summer, and honestly, it gave us a great 
perspective. I think that was the biggest thing. My parents wanted us to have kind of a bit of a broader idea of like the world isn't just what we see around us. It's way bigger than that. And there's way different walks of life and people are dealing with things much harder than us. Yeah. Um, and so one of the houses that we had built for one of the widows, um, it was a small house on the edge of her property because the rest had been struck by the war. And so it was very small and just my mom and my sister had a chance to actually walk through it and the rest of us had to stay outside. And then afterwards, my mom, I gathered us and she was like, there's nothing on the walls inside except for a poster of Britney Spears. And we're like, okay. I don't even think we knew who that was. I'm like, we're like who is that? Yeah. It's, we're not, like, it's not popping up on the TV. I'm like, that's not Stacey Rico. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who the heck is that? I Are you kidding? I don't no. know who that is. There's no got to be more to life. Are you kidding me? No She's idea. such an icon. That no was like idea. Christian music 101. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know. All, all <laughs> of my millennials will know exactly who that is. But anyway, so she walks out she's telling us about this and she was like what would you do if you had that kind of influence and i always say like in the movie of my life like the plane lands in la from kosovo and we immediately start into the entertainment industry because like that's kind of how it went <laughs> yeah. um and so then we have like this like polar opposite of like st louis super sheltered here i am with my tabernacle set and then we have like los angeles going into the entertainment industry which is like such polar opposites of both so um did that for a long time back and forth uh in LA was doing the entertainment thing in St. Louis prayer room leading worship just really learning how to be so comfortable in the presence of God um for 12 hours a day on Tuesdays we would just be in a house of prayer and I would lead worship sets um, and my devotional set, just me and the piano for two hours with no, no one would come to my set except for sometimes this one guy, I think he worked at the bank. He would take like a late lunch cause my set was two to four <laughs> and he would sit in it a little bit. And then when my dad could, he would come and sit in it. Um, but I think that's really where I learned like the comfortability of the presence of God mm. and just learning how to sit with him. And then from there, I... Do we want to go through, like, why I'm not in the entertainment industry anymore? Yeah, of course. Well, well, now that we're getting into it. When <laughs> I was 15, um, I kind of came to the end of myself in it. I mean, it's such a hard industry. And anybody who's able to withstand, um, hold who they are, hold their faith yeah. in the midst of all that, like, I commend so much. And even those who, like, become so shaky, I understand it. Like, I see it. And I have so much grace for it. Because as humans, we were never... Um, made we were made to worship but we were never made to be worshipped so when yeah. people's worship is directed onto you and it's misdirected um, it can just crush you Truly. so I just saw that happen so much and I think it started to feel that way towards me and mm. I'm so grateful that I we talk about like how funny it is like my spiritual background and how like um, I feel like sometimes when I was younger, I was even more spiritual than I am now. I'm like, man, you really just like touching heaven all the time. Like <laughs> that was like all I wanted to do. Um, and I'm just so grateful that I had that relationship with the Lord because there was so much trust there that when I felt like the Holy spirit, like pounding in my chest, being like, you have to get out of this, that I was able to stand up and, and mm. tell my parents that and, and really be able to like That's pivot incredible. the course of my life. Um, and that happened at 15 went back home to St. Louis. Um, my parents actually moved us churches and moved from like a house of prayer to like what would be more like a seeker sensitive. It was a mega church with multi lo multiple locations and everything just looks so much different. Mm -hmm. And I was like such a brat. And I was like, Oh, I know so much more about the presence of God than these people. Like, Oh my gosh. Like I'm used to like barefoot, like screaming and, in <laughs> tongues and all Lives. this stuff yeah so like farce. i'm like i knew the freedom of god you guys don't know that and i was I so literally, far is, it's crazy you so guys far. i was such a brat i thought i knew everything that's real and then they had like 22 minutes set aside on a sunday morning and i would just like rip on it i was like oh my gosh like i would serve on the team but like man we're putting god in a box and i'll never mm. forget i was walking backstage at one of our campuses and like the holy spirit just convicted me so much he was like stop saying that they're putting me in a box you're putting me in a box by thinking that i can't move in 22 minutes mm. and i think that's where oh the lord was so intricate with the pendulum switch 
of showing me the balance of like being free in worship and being able to follow Holy Spirit and the voice of God, but also being rooted and grounded in truth and in knowledge of who he is and learning how to lead people of all different walks of life, of all different expression, um, coming off the street. This is their first time experiencing the presence of God and how to steward that well. Cause I felt like I only knew how to lead like experienced swimmers into mm. the water. Yeah. I didn't know how to like show someone how to put like their floaties on right. wow. and like start to walk in. So, so it was, good. it was That's such a, a great picture. balance of figuring that out. Um, I worked there for a couple years. Um, I got to really learn so much, learn amazing things to do, probably learn some things not to do, which is mm. just as important. Um, and kind of really just take it all in. And I think that, the the difference of going into like worship wasn't really, really an industry at that time it wasn't like oh now i'm gonna pivot into worship music and start releasing that I, that wasn't that didn't exist um and my that church had asked me to be like a paid intern and i was like stoked because yeah. then i could quit my job at the restaurant that i was working at <laughs> um and uh i i've really been in full-time ministry ever since then and through the Lord leading started releasing music. Never thought I would do it. Um, and it really was like an agreement that I made with the Lord. Of I actually did my song at one of my friend's conferences. Her dad had a conference in um, Houston for worship leaders. And he was like, I really want you to do your song. And I sang it there. And it was for a conference of worship leaders. So they all took this song and started doing it in their own churches. Mm. And then from wow. there... Um, I had this, I had kind of a moment of PTSD and I was like, Lord, you're going to have to breathe on this because I do not ever want to self promote. I don't want strategic relationships. I don't want to work a room. I don't Mm -hmm. want like all of that, like strategy behind this. I want this to remain pure. This was always a safe place for me. That's why I gravitated towards worship. And so it honestly, my entire career or what you could say it is, um, ministry, It really has just been like the Lord opening doors from getting signed to releasing anything to creating this album, church, peace, and take me there and all these things. It's really just been the Lord um, leading and guiding and like crazy stuff, like random emails out of the blue and someone said your name to someone else and you should do this. And it's really, it's never been this like Mm -hmm. strategy. It's always been the Lord. So it's been super beautiful to see that unfold. And it's like... I call it all the time like this, like God thread. You can trace it back through your whole life and how things kind of connect to another Mm. thing. So anyway, that's a long story for your question, but um, nice. Okay, let's jump into some questions, you know, give the people what they want. What do the people want to know? Nuggets. What are the nuggets wanting to know? Nuggets want to know. Hey, nuggies. When was the moment? The first ever moment that you realized that you could sing. Mm. That is such a funny question. The first thing that comes to mind, I think since I could speak, I could sing. My mom was like vocal coach, built in. Mm. So the first time I ever remember having a solo, I was three years old. Wow. And And you remember this. Oh, yes. I had a solo in a Christmas choir. And I remember my mom rehearsing it with me. And like I had my own line that i sang and we all had little candles Mm -hmm. i remember that when did you realize you were good (laughs) my mom always told me i was good Uh, and here's the thing and here's how i (laughs) no but here's i've always been good okay but here's the truth about it okay it really is like a god-given talent because my brother josh was tone deaf and for you hearing that you might be like what if you listen to my brother's music i know i'm shocked um he was the most diligent out of all of us he would sit down at the piano every day with my mom to learn the notes because like my mom is not a sugar coater so that's why i'm saying like my mom always told me i was good i believed her because she also told my brother throughout our whole childhood how bad he was and how like josh it was this was my mom okay because all of us were going to be incredible at what we were gifted in so my mom like josh you're an athlete my brother josh was like six foot when he was nine okay he was massive him on his little soccer team crazy 
but he always wanted it was like classic high school musical mm-hmm. he always Troy. wanted to be a singer uh-huh of course but Battle but Man. my parents were like no you're going to be an athlete because you're not talented at being a singer oh wow and josh would literally be like when i accept a grammy i'm just gonna say you guys didn't believe in me <laughs> and then finally my mom was like <laughs> Sat down with him every single day at the piano and hit every single note until he could match them. So that's why I believe like tone deaf is actually something you can teach. Like you can train your ear to hear pitch. Um, but you were born with it. it yeah. Like. <laughs> I just She's, it was it definitely was easier for me. It. Josh had to really put a lot of work into it. But sometimes I feel like I genuinely feel like people who have God given talent. Yeah. Sometimes are less talented than those who've had to work for it because they they, they've never had to harness it. Yep. And it was just like something that was given and not something that had to be earned. I feel That's like why I believe if you're a singer, mm. you should always learn an instrument. You always need something else. Like you should be growing in yeah. what you've been given because that is something that's been God given to you and you need to refine it. I'll never forget a friend of mine was a drummer and he like was a prodigy. They would always call him a prodigy when he was like 14. And I remember I asked him, I was like, do you play drums anymore? He's like, no, because I was always the prodigy. And then I Mm. became 19 and I couldn't play like any other 19 year old. Wow. Because at 14, I was a prodigy. But at 19, I was a beginner. And it's like truly like when you don't harness that raw talent, it doesn't turn into anything. I feel like that's something you do so well, especially with songwriting. You're always writing. Thank you for Mm. saying that. Yeah. You write about everything. You do. Truly. <laughs> so many moments, so many stories, she'll just turn into a song. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's something you're consistently practicing. Thank so, you. You want to talk about that maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is this turning into a question? Um, I love songwriting. I've been songwriting since, um, I can't even remember when. Both of my parents are songwriters. And I remember, I think my siblings went to, I think my sister would have been 14 and my brother, my oldest brother would have been 16. I'm the youngest of four. And if Liz was 14, then I would have been nine. They went to their first songwriting seminar. My parents were like, we're going to invest in them in any way we can <laughs> in the musical side of things. And so we, they, we would go to songwriting courses and um, songwriting like camps and challenges and mm. all these things before songwriting was like a huge craft that really anybody could harness. Um, And that was just kind of like the culture in our household. And I honestly feel like songwriting was such a way for me to get all of the feelings inside of my body, outside of it, and on a page and kind of lock them away in that. Super emotional when I was young. I didn't know that I was OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, And it's basically like my mind is just always on turbo. And when I was young, it felt like constant, like an attack and Mm. something that really like silenced everything was worship and songwriting. So um, being in like the pop side of the entertainment industry, young songwriting looked like storytelling. Every single thing that I experienced, I wanted to put it into a song. And then all the experiences that I had with the Lord, I wanted to put into a song as well. So um now i pretty much just anything that comes to me it's probably a form of coping (laughs) processing i just want to work it into a song it's such a release for me i feel like i feel like god gives us our gifts and talents for us first before anyone else just like our bodies are designed to heal themselves if someone were to give you a cut on your arm or if you were to trip and fall and scrape your knee your body just the way that the lord designed us Um, it's naturally going to heal itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's how God gives us our gifts and talents too. I think they're to heal us first and to minister to us first. Um, So I really feel like songwriting, um, when people tell me like they're impacted by music that I was able to write, it's always so flooring to me because I'm like, man, I can't believe you connected to that because I feel like the Lord gave that to me Mm. for me. So anytime I release music and I feel like I'm, I love listening to my own music. I don't know if that sounds like arrogant or not, but I don't feel like it's that way because I feel like the Lord gave it to me and it's not mine anyway. Um, And I love it so much because I got to see healing from it first. So I know that it works. I know that the presence of the Lord rests in it and Mm -hmm. the power of God and the oil that's in it because I got to um, receive from it. Um, And that's truly like any gift from the Lord. So 
if you're creative out there or maybe you're an analytical mind or whatever you feel like the Lord has given you a gift in, I really feel like that was something for you as well, not just for others. Wow. Wow. That's absolutely beautiful. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Um, okay. So for the new listener or the person who may not know much about you, what are you up to these days? Where are you at what are you doing well i just started a podcast (laughs) started a podcast called the golden nugget (laughs) um i got married two months ago right enoch that's right wow it's been two months it's been over two months yeah january 19th 19th yeah i never thought i would get married in january two months I know. I'm actually shocked. I never thought about it. I was shocked. <laughs> of course. Yeah, you're a guy. I was like, Girls think I was like, it. I'm never getting married in January. What an ugly month. <laughs> oh Literally. <God. laughs> I know. It's, it's beautiful now. It's, yeah. Thank you for saying that. Lucky well, you. like my parents got married in January and both of my siblings' birthdays are in January. So you were like, I don't want to add another holiday. To I guess month. so. But we were like, you know what? Why wait when the Lord's told you yes? You know what Just I mean? We it. finished marriage counseling and we said, we're in it yeah. to win it. <laughs> Um, uh-huh. so why, just why got we? married, just kind of building a life together. I am truly starting to work on my next album, Ooh. but we're going to wait to talk about that because yeah. church deluxe comes out the end of this week, actually. Yeah. Let's go um, Friday. Well, technically Thursday night, but Friday. Thursday. So we're That's going exciting. to all love on those songs. Next week's episode will be exclusively about that so i won't touch on it today but all things church if you have not heard my latest album it is called church go stream it so you can have a little bit of context for next week's episode when all we do is talk about church i think we're gonna go song by song and go through everything so that's gonna be a long long episode it'll be really Mm -hmm. fun anyway all that to say you're cooking on the next one we're cooking cooking in the kitchen that's (laughs) exciting cooking in the what else is new where are you Yes, Where like, are you? like physically, like geographically, all the things, all the things. I don't know why that question feels like an attack. <laughs> physically, well, okay, so you, um, we know that you love the local church, and you just released your record, your deluxe record's coming out about it. Uh, what local church are you in, and what like is your is your heart there? I love that you're asking me that because Kayla also works at the <laughs> church. <laughs> Um, Shoreline yeah, City, does. and I talk about it so Shoreline much. It's my favorite place in the world. Beautiful. I feel like when I talk about it, I f- like it's like I'm talking about Narnia. Honestly, um, it's just such yeah. a beautiful place, and I feel so honored that I get to be on staff there. And honestly, this record that I just released would not have existed without mm. um, Shoreline City and the influences of like Pastors Earl and Onika, and just the like loving community of people mm. restoring so much of my faith just in the body of Christ. And I always tell people it's not that I carry around this, oh, my church is so much better than yours mentality. No, it's it's this healthy church is possible, like happy ministry. I think we avoid the word happy in ministry so much because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, that's on happenings. Like we have joy. We don't have happiness. And I'm like, I think the Lord also loves happiness. Yep. <laughs> I think that um, that that's something that doesn't have to be void in ministry. Like it can feel full and full of life. Um, so I'm so honored to live here, Dallas, Texas. People think all Let's the time go. that I live somewhere else. I go everywhere and I always hear a different city of where I've lived in. And I know I've lived in a lot of cities. But um, I do live in Dallas. I don't live in Nashville. That's a big misconception about me. But I am there all the time. I get to be a part of a lot of music things that happen in Nashville. A lot of my best friends are there. Um, But home base is here in Dallas in the heat. It is a spring. So there's been like so much rain. Rain. I don't know. I don't love it. I mean, it's... It's March and we're about to be March. It's supposed to be April and it's still cold. So I'm not sure. A little bit. I like us taking our time getting to the blistering heat. I agree. But once it gets here, it doesn't leave. And I'm like, I'm trying to explain it to Enoch because oh obviously God. he oh, just yeah. moved here. So you have like But you've summer. lived in Atlanta, huh, yeah. Atlanta? Hot Atlanta. You know, know what's so Something funny? The first Dallas. time I ever went to Atlanta, it was in the winter. But in my, I'd never been to Atlanta before. And I was like, hot Atlanta. It was freezing. It was in the winter. It was yeah. absolutely frigid. We, we definitely got all four seasons. Oh, my but dream. I think the only difference is over there it's a lot more humid. Mm-hmm. Here it's dry heat. 
It's dry. And then you have like summer and then Texas that. summer. I think I prefer that. Dry heat. Dry heat? hundred percent. I prefer dry heat. I mean it's worse for like your body. Yeah. But oh. I feel like I, last summer was my first summer. I felt like I was gonna pass out every day. Ooh. It's worse for your body, but you don't retain as much water weight. What are we oh. talking about? What in humidity? You retain like I remember like moving to Los Angeles. Oh, so I'm getting shredded this summer. Well, <laughs> yeah. I like I and when <laughs> if I live somewhere I'm like a, a ring size up. Like when I moved to Los Angeles, I remember like all my fingers got smaller and I also wouldn't get nosebleeds all the time. Excuse I know because it was so dry. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm breathing so heavy into the mic. Can you guys hear that? A little bit. I keep. Like, Sorry. <laughs> it's just like I'm like, I think I'm just so comfortable with just breathing so hard. <laughs> like, you know, all the time will be like, why are you breathing so heavy? I'm like, am I? I think I need like consistently. I, I, what is that called? I have like a deviated septum, maybe. I think we all do. Yeah, at this point, <laughs> that'll cover a rhinoplasty. What? Mm. A, a deviated job? septum. <laughs> Could you Let's get into plexus. People are like, you want to get a nose job? No, but I do want to breathe better. I think I just, I, you know what I realized? <laughs> not to make this. I not to make this about the pandemic. Oh my god. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Guys, I somehow, no. I somehow will do She'll bring up the pandemic twice a day, at least. Guys, it was a really traumatic time. And it that's was. like, we really sweep it under the rug. I think we try to move on I from think it. it. No one wants yeah. to talk about it. Honestly, anyway, it wasn't, it wasn't it's I'm like, just going like to go and say, to address this it. isn't cute to talk about. It's not fun to say, but I think wearing a mask made me a mouth breather. Okay. I, I think you I agree. guys and I you're really a different <laughs> type of mouth breather. I'll walk up to her and I'll just like close her chin. <laughs> you guys, I'm not kidding. And I just remember like this is so embarrassing to talk about. I might have us cut this, but I'm like I would wear my mask and just like underneath my mask, I was fully. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like I wait, bet. I can't breathe. I know because it was like no, I was just was trying to get oxygen where I could for real. <laughs> That's real. You know what I mean? Sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially under those N95s, you really couldn't breathe. Like, it was kind of like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, you know, it was a lot. But not to bring us always back there. I just feel like there's so much to know. (laughs) Always back to the pandemic. Anyway, next question. (laughs) Can you tell us about, we know that Enoch is a very uh, special guy in your life, but we know there's another little guy in your life. Can you tell us about him? (laughs) To anybody who doesn't know what we're about to talk about, they're like, (laughs) <laughs> what? Excuse me. <laughs> There's like, another little guy. You're like, <laughs> also, to all little. of those who are like, oh, it's because she's pregnant. That's why they got married so quick. No, okay. no, you guys wanted that to be true. Psych. Mm, no, <laughs> be crazy. Not the case. <laughs> um, Carl is my cat. He's four years old. Carly. He actually just turned four this last week. It was his birthday. And I realized that in cat years, he'd be 32, which makes me feel ill because I don't want to think about like a 32 year old man, like yeah. living in the house with us. And we, we don't treat him like and that. we like f- feed him and give him water. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, he's four. He's just a baby. Yeah. That's how he's we treat just him. a young guy. And he's <laughs> so sweet. And he I wanted him to be in here for this, but he was kind of losing it there's yeah. a really bad thunderstorm He's today and he had a lot of his calming gummies so at the beginning of us like setting up he was laying in this chair being so sweet but then something something, something happened shifted <laughs> and he got the zoomies and he was zooming and we just got a oh, new chair yeah. in the living room and he tried to put his little claws on that thing and i said ah. so he's now in the guest room locked up <laughs> he's, he's, locked up. He's, pissed. <laughs> he's, he's in a bad mood but you know what He's just a boy, so it's just, just fine. But when you think about that Wish behavior for a 32-year-old, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's kind of crazy. I've guys, heard it before. Guys can't use I'm just a boy. I'm, I'm just, just a girl, boy. universal. I'm just uh, a boy. 100%. Because yeah. it's like, do you want to say I'm just a boy? <laughs> no, really. you want to be a man. a man. Whoever wants to say that. <laughs> anyway, but Ooh, that was Carl Real. is Carl's the light of my life. He's the sweetest Excuse little me? guy now. Whoa. It's crazy. One of the lights. Mm. <laughs> anyway, but you <laughs> love him too. Enoch hated cats. And he was like, yes, he oh, should. you have a cat? And I was like, you don't understand. And now 
He's got you wrapped around his little paw. <laughs> it's just Carl. It's just him. It's just him. I will say, Only as a one. as a hater of cats, um, mm-hmm. I can actually be in the same room with Carl, and that's saying something for me. So, yeah. I could see one day you getting to a place where you pet Carl. Well, if the Lord wills, we'll see, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if it's in His plan. <laughs> I love saying that. Honestly, you could say that about anything. Also, the best transitional phrase to anything: if you want to get out of a conversation, if you want to transition a conversation, you say, "Ain't that a lot like life?" <laughs> And and then you could literally, the you could literally say that to anything. Like if someone's like telling you about like trials and tribulations, and you like have no idea. Like, Who taught you that? Ain't that a lot like life? Actually, a pastor that I worked for a long ain't time that ago. A lot like life. Ain't that okay. a lot like life? And then you just keep going. So that's the golden. I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> not the golden. All that to say. All that to say. Worst conversation. Yeah. In St. Louis. LA. The Lou. Can you hear my breath? Tabernacle, Perry Stone, <laughs> Signs of the Times, all the things. What's the golden nugget of episode one? I would say the golden nugget of episode one. Oh man, there's so many things, honestly. But I think kind of the synopsis of all of my story and my childhood and the things that we maybe have touched on, we didn't go too in depth. One day we will. Maybe we'll have my parents on the podcast really get (laughs) digging deep. Um, But I think that the golden nugget for this podcast is that the Lord truly works every single thing in. I look back on Mm. my life and even talking about some of the things that have happened um, kind of in the past and I just see how God takes any ingredient of your life that you surrender to him and he truly does work it together for his good yeah. and it's not just something that we say and it's not just something that we read about and it's not just a scripture that sounds pretty it is really the truth I'm a living witness that the Lord does take everything and work mm-hmm. it out for your good um, and maybe you're in a season right now that you're like I don't think the Lord's using this. I think this is a wasted season. I can tell you that that's not the truth, that every single thing is, um, is working out. I I like to think that everything that we go through, even if it's the hardest season, it is your time. I see life lessons like a tool belt now. And even the hardest seasons, I felt like what we, what I fought for in an Mm. area of freedom, the Lord gave me this tool that now I fought for an area of freedom in this, in this relationship or in the church or worship leading or learning in through leadership, whatever it might be. Now I'm, I'm carrying all these tools in my tool belt and now I can help others. Um, And if we can start seeing those things of seasons of life, um, I promise you the Lord will show you the gold in those seasons and there's nothing wasted at Mm. any time and there's a time for everything like ecclesiastes says there's a time to weep there's time to mourn there's a time to plant Mm. and there's a time to harvest so um whatever season you're in there's time for it and the lord is going to use it we love you so So much nuggets (laughs) go signing off your best friends and your favorite podcast we love you and goodbye Bye-bye. Bye.